Welcome everybody to another Cape Conversations. I'm Melinda Gallant and I want to welcome you today. We're interviewing again, I'm so lucky to be able to do all these interviews, I'm interviewing again another candidate for State Senate for the Barnstable Plymouth District and I'm excited to meet her. So come along, let's have another Cape Conversations. Hi everybody, I am sitting here with a wonderful woman who's running for State Senate and I am so excited she's here with us today and Susan Moran, how, how do you are do? you? Thanks for having me. I did me. pronounce your last name right. Perfectly. All right, Moran. Yes. That sounds French. Uh, Irish, but yes, it does sound French. <laughs> <laughs> but Irish. Anyway. Right. Well, my husband's a gallant and it turns out he's Irish, so there you go, figure. I don't know. Anyway, I am so happy you're here today. So I always kind of think about these things. You're running for office. Why? I'm running because I've been in local government and regional government for over five years. Mm -hmm. I was asked to run. I didn't know what I was getting into. <laughs> but I've learned that mm -hmm. I need to go to the State House to get funding for all the projects that we've all been working on. Not just for, you're from Falmouth. I'm from Falmouth. Right, but not just for Falmouth. It not would be for Falmouth. For Falmouth, Bourne, Sandwich, and part of Plymouth, right? That's right, Plymouth, Kingston, and Pembroke. So it's six towns, and the issues are very similar on both sides of the canal. So I'm experienced in things like, you know, water quality, in things like beach erosion, in things like the tourism economy. So, uh, and certainly you and I have in common the importance of the bridges. So yeah. uh, that's, um, and it, most, most of it is uh, state funding. So I'm raring and ready to go to make those projects all happen successfully. Well, it looks like the bridges are gonna happen. Yes. I mean, it's kind of scary, and, and Trump hasn't nixed them yet, or at uh, least the feds haven't, so. And, and Marquis's been working on it um, yeah. diligently, yeah, he uh, has. which is so appreciated, and, and the state, I think, has a good plan. The Department of Transportation right. has been right on it, and it's really all because of the, uh, the fire lit by the chambers, by um, right. Wendy Norcross from right. the Cape, and, yep. and also by uh, Marie Oliva. Right. Uh, so that's really appreciated, and uh, thanks to everyone on the team. Well, yeah, it's been fun to, certainly to be on it, but the only reason why I got involved, I do sit on the chamber board, but I got involved because I live in Sandwich, and it becomes gridlock in Sandwich when those bridges are backed up. And what worries me is, at my ripe old age, if I have a heart attack, I want the guys to be able to get to me. And now, you know, they come from further away sometimes because we've moved our, you know, our principal fire and, and um, police stations, uh, you know, to the middle of our town, which isn't a bad thing. Right. It needed to be done and they needed new facilities. And even though the fire department has, uh, still holds the, the smaller um, station in, in, on the village on 6A, in the village on 6A, you know, again, if it's out somewhere else, they're coming from out here. So. And you can't get anywhere on 130 or on Katuit Road. And, and safety issue. A horrendous safety issue. A absolutely. <clears throat> and in, in fact, um, it's it's getting to your doctor's appointment. It's visiting relatives. Right. It, it's um, you know the the bridges need to be. Uh, safe and of the size that accommodates, you know, cars. So you're not driving, and all of a sudden, <laughs> that that thing that every now and then in the in the accident. So it's, um, yeah. you know, I appreciate the way that the state has worked, um, but it's not the only transportation issue that we have. Of course not. You look at Route Three uh, in Plymouth, gridlock all the time. Same problems. It literally takes away from your family time at home, it takes away from other things that you right. want to do, it eliminates your employment possibilities. It, I, um, I spent a good amount of time on the um, Cape Cod Regional Transport Authority Board, mm -hmm. and I learned a lot about public transportation, transportation in general, and I've been to the state quite a bit to work mm -hmm. on not only the, the transportation issues, but also bike path issues, which mm -hmm. are, of course are another um, driver for our, our tourism economy. Right. It, they're the same issues on both sides of the canal, and I, I've got enough experience that I really know exactly where the solutions lie. And that's and that is a wonderful thing. So you're going to share those solutions? I, 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 absolutely. Well, you know, it, not only it, it's talking about it, but yeah. you know, in local government, you do a lot of initiatives. So, for mm -hmm. example, in Falmouth, we were expanding Route 28, and mm -hmm. some homes go really right up to a little bit of the sidewalk where there is yeah. one. 
And there was understandably an uproar of folks who felt like, well, gee, if there's an expansion, mm -hmm. what if my kids are playing ball and the ball rolls into the street? Safety concerns. Right. How about, I really love this tree, is that going to go or not? Right. And as chair of the Board of Selectmen, which I was for two years, mm -hmm. I brought a, an original community engagement format together. And what it did was it took the town's experts, DPW and others, bike path um, and oh, pedestrian sure. Um, committees because we rely a lot on committees and and the expertise of experts and folks from the state and we brought them all together we pointed them um, from the Board of Selectmen and we're now using that model for many other things such as fire stations mm -hmm. and you know we we've uh, I know that sandwich has just changed um, you know the building um, you know purpose mm -hmm. same thing happens in Plymouth so these are these are things where you need public engagement so that not only folks are informed and they have a mm -hmm. chance to express the concerns, but it leads to successful projects because then you have that buy-in where folks are happy with the way you're spending their public tax dollars. Right. Well, now tell me, wh what are your main concerns? What are the what are three issues that you go? I'm going to ta these. If I get in, mm -hmm. right? If you get in, what are the three things you're going to tackle right off the bat? So uh, my focus is is really on things that mean something to people's daily lives. So mm -hmm. I talked about transportation and the fact that, you know, if you're in gridlock, that just takes away from not only job opportunities, but family opportunities. Right. Another is, of course, housing. We know that um, our housing demands for folks to be able to live in our communities are very high. Um, we've got in many of the communities, we, we have a high percentage of older folks who are here because that it's a beautiful community mm -hmm. in southeastern Mass and in the Plymouth Barnstable district, mm -hmm. but services such as um, whether it's hotel jobs, restaurant jobs, post jobs, teacher jobs, um, emergency responder jobs, these are all positions that make a rich community and our housing is not everywhere in the state that they are affordable. So we're looking for housing for everyone and to, to cooperate and get um, buy-in from builders about the best way that should be done. In addition, seniors' needs are changing. A lot of folks um, want walkability. Sure. They want to be in communities where, you know, you have uh, facilities, you know, sewers there. It's it's um, you go public transportation. Speaking of the RTA, where that that kind of rich life is something that really builds our tax base and mm -hmm. makes it more affordable for us to live here. And then the last thing, of course, is the green and blue economy. As mm -hmm. a lawyer, I actually um, have done solar developments. I've mm -hmm. represented um, several landowners, and there are really great opportunities from the state in terms of clean, green energy. And, and I was on the original water coalition for, for the Cape before the 208 plant. Our, you know, our, our rich lifestyle and our tourism economy mm -hmm fundamentally depend on the, on the aquifer and us um, doing all of the things that uh, we're doing in terms of experiments for um, better treatment and less expensive treatment and just um, finding that the financing options and working closely with the state so that folks can afford it if they do go on sewer and they have to do those hookups where you have low interest or no interest loans so that your betterment in your housing costs right are doable. Right. So it's about looking at it comprehensively. And from that, we get good development. From that, we get a better business tax base. Right. It's These are projects, I like projects where one thing really has a positive effect on the other and where you have opportunities, not only for good funding from the mm -hmm. state, but from public-private partnerships sure, sure. as well. Sure, sure. Well, I worked for a long time for Mashby Commons. I managed Mashby Commons a long, long time. And uh, I've been out of there a long, long time, but I always laugh um, when I read in the paper, of the Enterprise, uh, that people in Mashby or in surrounding areas are always so surprised, well, Mashby Commons is going to expand more. It's always been on the book. I went to work there in 1987, that shows you how old I am. And 
that it exactly is what they said they were going to do, and it's it continues to be that way. It's a standard bearer. I can't tell you how often in housing, you know, I was there with Jay Ash just in, in uh, talking about various projects, and we mm -hmm. have some great projects on the Cape in terms of development. Oh, absolutely. But the Mashpee Commons and 704 Maine and, and Falmouth, there are certain yep. developments that are looked at as things that the community not only um, accepts and, and has put buy-in into, but thrives on. Right. How many jobs do, do Mashpee Commons offer? How many, um, those tourism dollars, that OPM, other people's oh, money, right, right. where you bring in, and then, and guess what, those folks then, are they go look at real estate. Those folks go to restaurants, and it, it starts by, you know, having that attraction, and you know, I think uh, we were talking a little off camera. I, neither of us are big shoppers, I, I guess, yeah. or certainly, but that's you just find things that um, that that are from other places. It, you know, it's brought here. It's mm -hmm. so interesting and great for our young people to just have that excitement and be able to get jobs at some of the local restaurants. Right. I think it's it's a win-win as long as it's done carefully with a view towards not having too much traffic and with um, input from the community, which that yeah. organization has done. Well, I know view of the future, for sure. I mean, you know, that's, I think, you know, that is. Now, I know Mashpee isn't a part of that territory. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know who represents Mashpee, who, who's the state senator, I don't know. So, Julian Sierra? Oh, no, Julian's down, down Cape, isn't he? Mm. Oh, anyway, my. short answer is I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Isn't that funny? I've been out of there so long, I don't know. I would know normally, but I, when I work there, but I don't now, so mm -hmm. I don't. Um, but using that as an example uh, in areas of Falmouth, because you're from Falmouth, mm -hmm. um, I, I worked in the real estate industry when I um, got out of shopping centers and uh, for about five years, then decided I wasn't good at it, so that, it was a good thing I made that choice. However, I worked for a very good company, Robert Paul Properties, uh, and they're very reputable and, and fabulous, and I love all the people that work there because they, they were very nice to me. However, that said, my husband and I thought about moving to Falmouth from Sandwich. Mm -hmm. Your tax rate's a little lot better. Um, and uh, we have a son and daughter-in-law who live in Falmouth that own the Pickle Jar Kitchen on Main wow. Street, who are shut right now, and it's a good thing since they've dug up all of Main Street. Oh my gosh, those fries that oh, oh they and are. the pickles, fried pickles. <sighs> fried pickles, I oh know. wow. And urban fries, yeah, Incredible. very good. Anyway, uh, we thought, we, well, maybe we'll just move to Falmouth, you know, get a small, you know, we already live in a small house, but maybe a one-story, whatever. Well, you can't touch it. You can't touch uh, property in Falmouth. I mean, it's a half million dollars, and, and for a half million dollars, you basically get nothing. It, it really is a problem that, um, you know, it, it rises, in my view, out of the fact that real estate is um, one of the other popular industries in the area. Mm -hmm. And because of the tourism economy, you mm -hmm. can certainly, you know, rent uh, places f um, for a week of the same amount or about, you know, what you could otherwise get for a month. And I'm, I'm also proud to be a realtor, yeah. um, so uh, in addition to a lawyer, but the, um, you know, the, the thing in terms of our community is we need balance. Right. We need everyone. And mm -hmm. so I don't think um, there's much disagreement in that, but I think that it's a matter of how do we, um, how do we involve the builders and the town and, and you know, um, have public-private partnerships or, mm -hmm. um, for example, I'm also uh, I'm vice chair of the Falmouth ED Economic Development uh -huh. Industrial Corporation and I'm also uh, chair of the um, Barnstable County mm -hmm. Economic Development. And we, we see all the time that, you know, it's almost like a three-legged stool mm -hmm. where uh, one thing, you know, if we look at, um, you know, pricing people out of housing, it really doesn't help anyone. And no. so it's that balance yeah. of people, you know, who want to move to the Cape, buying homes, and then, you know, renting them out for a while. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that in some ways takes a home out of, you know, our full-time um, home ownership or home rental. Mm -hmm. And so I, I will say that the folks on the Cape, Alyssa, oh gosh, I'm, I'm blanking on her last name. She's she's done terrifically for oh, housing. Oh, Yes, and yeah. just creative ideas. Um, yeah. you know, in she terms did a of, TED Talk, you know. Oh, no kidding, I yeah. have to see that. Yeah, but just it's on YouTube. Having out-of-the-box thinking yeah. where, where you have people up First of all, appreciate the issue, how you know how fundamental it is, and how everyone should care mm -hmm. and be problem solving, and then to actually 
throw these ideas out and just see what happens. And, and the chambers worked sure. well with that and certainly um, the Cape Cod Commission. So we're all on it. Um, right. It's just a matter of navigating to that place and it's, it's not going to be done overnight. But if we have someone who understands the issues at the State right. House that can work with that funding and, and have uh, the Plymouth Barnstable District treated um, as the, the high need area it is, mm -hmm. as opposed to a place that's just great uh, to visit, then, then I, I think we'll go further, and that's what I want to do. Well, uh, the other question, and I just read it um, online uh, in the Enterprise, um, wastewater. Mm -hmm. All the questions about wastewater, which I personally, especially here in Sandwich, I mean, I, I sit on the Cape Cod Chamber, they've been talking about wastewater for the entire time <laughs> I've been on it. Um, yeah. You know, uh, it's a huge issue here. When I was at Mashpee Commons, part of my job mm -hmm. was to oversee the wa their wastewater treatment plant. Mm -hmm. um, after I left, it did expand again. It expanded while I was there and then expanded again. Um, it, it is, uh, and people just say, oh, no, 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 we've got private systems. They, they don't work. I mean, I come from the Midwest originally, and there, were, there was wastewater, uh, you know, there was a wastewater treatment plant not far from where we lived, and we lived with a doctor on one side and a PhD on the other, so it wasn't a shabby area, let us say. Um, and there was a wastewater treatment plant. You didn't smell it. It took care of the water that needed to go where it needed to go, and everybody, even though we lived out in the country, we were on it. And the, the problem up until recently has been it causes another problem, right? It causes, you know, our, our water to be full of nitrates and, and it's... The individual it, systems. Exactly. Right. Um, eventually, and, and also just the overpopulation and overuse. So um, at, when I first became a member of the Board of Selectmen and was first um, elected, I volunteered to be on the Water Quality Coalition mm -hmm. because I think that that's something that informs the, the towns and the county in mm -hmm. terms of how do we get to clean water? How do we all pool our resources and do it as inexpensively as possible? And you look at uh, folks like Eric Turkington, mm -hmm. uh, Virginia Valiella, who had experience in working with the state mm -hmm. to get the financing needs. Um, the, the, the 208 plan is now sort of replaced the Water Quality Coalition. Right. I'm in touch and I know all those folks. And you look at um, George Hufelder has done out of the box, you know, it, it's basically wood shavings and yeah, right. using yeah, natural things. That, yeah. um, there are, there are um, funding sources where grants um, have been obtained, and I've been on these boards, where we give the homeowner some help. If you're going to kind of stick your neck out with your family and your home to try these new systems so that everyone in the Plymouth Barnstable District can get mm -hmm. the benefit of your research, then we're going to help you sure. by some grant monies, but you, they still have a lot, um, a lot of expense. But, but the, you know, the crucial thing is, to share all that information sure. so that everyone gets the benefit of the financing opportunities and of which experiments really work. And, and we're in it and it's happening and it's giving people jobs as well. So this, um, the Plymouth Barnstable District is a leader in, in those things, mm -hmm. but we have to do more. Open space uh, purchasing helps a lot. Sure. You need the filter of the earth, so you need those right. open spaces not developed uh, so that that, that can help um, preserve your aquifer. Well, and the other thing too about development, if it's if it's um, higher density development, it is better than if everybody sits on five acres. A absolutely and right. And it was a crazy thought way back when on Cape Cod, well, we're gonna keep people out by making sure everybody has to have five acres. And then it was everybody has to have an acre. And then it was like, oh, what, you know, now they finally have figured it out, I think. Well, well it's, a, it's a balance so that yeah. the, um, as, uh, as chair of the um, Barnesville County Economic Development, we work with and we reviewed with the community Cape Cod Commission's regional policy plan. Right. So um, and they've changed a lot since the beginning. Huge. Yes, they, they were have. So so negative and so difficult combative. to work with. Well, they <laughs> had a big job, right? Yeah. They they were there to protect. Right. The land and to protect the future right. and now that that it sort of gave everyone a bit of a clean slate in my view and now Christy Senatori her group amazing mm -hmm. in terms of bringing the community in having more dialogue mm -hmm. looking at um, looking at things where there's more flexibility and having those 
centers of development where there already are um, sewer systems. I mean, people from outside don't even appreciate how many septic systems we have. They just think everyone <laughs> is on uh, public. Right. So well, because everywhere else in the country they are. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so it's, you know, so now we, we're learning because that's right. worked in some respects, learning to develop where we have central areas of transportation, central areas of wastewater treatment, central, central areas of public services, whether it's ambulance, police, fire. Mm -hmm. These are things that, that are economical. Mm -hmm. that's, well, it's true. Well, tell, tell me a little bit about you. I think our paths have crossed and crossed and crisscrossed and we've been in things or been on phone calls that we didn't know each other was on. I mean, we knew we were on them, but we didn't know we were each on it. it exactly. Uh, group calls and such. So, uh, conference calls. Yeah. So, uh, tell, tell me a little bit about yourself. You know, you live in Falmouth, I know that. I do live in Falmouth. <laughs> I grew up on the North Shore. Um, oh, I was where? The, I grew up in Stoneham. Oh, yeah. Um, I was There's the a oldest. there, right? Uh, no. no, that's a different one. This oh, is just just I um I actually went to kindergarten in Medford. Oh, okay. And was the oldest of five girls, and my mom was home with little ones, and I, as a kindergartner, walked to you know the Swan School or something, yeah. and yeah. um and just had, as the oldest had some independence. My dad had a, an accident when he was in the service, mm -hmm. um in the um, Air Force, mm -hmm. and was uh, in a wheelchair for oh, most of my life. And so I know a lot about um, handicapped accessibility. Yeah, sure. Um, he was also a great outdoorsman, and you in know, a wheelchair, unbelievable. In a, in a day when they didn't make any, it wasn't easy. Yeah. Not many accommodations. No. He, um, he also worked, volunteered for the town. Oh. He was very civic minded and, and helped people with curb cuts and sidewalk building. Oh my gosh. He, um, he did a lot for the community. He worked with David Mugar to start the. Um, First, um, he was my first boss here on the Cape. Oh, right. So he, yeah. um, so the the celebration of, um, you know, the is it New Year's or Fourth of July? Fourth of July. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So I was, you know, he worked for public TV. Yeah. And and radio, and I was GBH. I was in the bell tower with my dad, ringing the bells, broadcasting. Yeah. Oh, fun. All of that stuff, and and he really instilled in me not only um, a real thirst. For public service, the the idea that one person really can make a difference, sure. but you know that thing where you you if you work hard um, and you're open and to other people's ideas, mm -hmm. that's the best success. Um, I you know I was in a I was at a library board meeting, and my um, I had three kids. My my son had just gone to college, and they said, well, gee, we have to get someone to run for selectman. And there was just this turn, that, and, they all and I, you. I, of course, went like this as well. <laughs> and you know, I, I, um, I'm a lawyer with a local business practice. I right. do. I've done exciting things, um, Indian casino litigation. I had the first oh um, uh, privacy case against the Bank of New York Mellon. I wow. represented Billy Tyne's daughters in the Perfect Storm case against Warner yeah. Brothers. Yeah. Things that you do on airplanes now. Yeah. But I really wanted to stay on the Cape and and do a right. business practice. I ran, I had probably, I was kind so of unknown. So how long have you lived in Falmouth? I've lived in Falmouth probably kissing 30 years. Okay, so, so did you raise your kids here? I, I, my daughter, my youngest daughter, my oldest daughter rather, Jolene, um, started high school here. Oh, okay. None too happy about being moved to start no, high school. where were you before that? I was in um, uh, the north of, I was sort of working in, in Framingham and, and living in Ashland. Oh, okay, sure. So she had, uh, she had started, um, finished middle school there. Yeah. And she said, "You're bringing me that exactly. cow town, kicking and screaming that cob on the town. cave." <laughs> and my idea, like many other people, yeah. was, you know, I, I can work. I'll have my practice here, and if I have a half an hour in the day, I can take the kids to the yeah. playground, to the beach. Right. So many natural, you know, resources right. here. And um, you know, I but there was a big monkey wrench thrown. I um, I was just had my first mammogram, and I was told, "You're not going to make your son's fifth birthday." What? I had huge tumor. I um, oh my goodness. I went through eight surgeries, I think the count is. Wow. I was bald for a couple of years. I tried cases in a wig. Yeah. I um uh, you know you have and, nice hair now. It came back white. Not but anyway. <laughs> the um It's and, pretty though. It's not a, it's not a bad white. It's a good well, white. Well, thank you. Well, terrific su success with great medicine, but yeah. you know, over 10 years of medications yeah. and it what it does 
is, um, you know, and I, I was a fighter from the beginning. I mean, it's kind of lower middle class, mm -hmm. kind of like I said, my dad, kind of your, your world is what you make it. Just work yeah. hard. Yeah. Well, with that experience, you know that, you know, you, you learn how to pick up your bootstrings. You learn yeah. what kind of metal you yeah. have. And you also have a great appreciation for, you know, lots of people that help you. And so that, you know, that sort of has informed me even more. You know, and, and we talked about, you know, the many things that we all do. You know, being, um, you know, deputy speaker on the, the Cape Cod right. legislative government. Yeah. You know, being uh, volunteering on uh, cable advisory committee or veterans committee. Sure. My dad was a veteran. All of these things, you know, because uh, they inform one another. Sure. They make you better at every job that you do. And, um, and it's, it's really, it's, to me, uh, you know, I brought my kids up, my, um, my son came home, gee, mom, you know, the local playground just has a slide left. I was playing Frisbee with my, he graduated Sandwich High, by the way, yeah. oh, with, my, one, yeah. with my track friends. And I, I'm so terrible. I, I was working, I looked up, I said, well, why don't you do something about that? Yeah. And just kind of, and he raised, at, not an Eagle Scout project yeah. on his own, yeah. $90,000 to fix that local playground. And he engaged the neighborhood kids, he engaged the town, he, he got to speak with amazing people. Uh, uh, What's he do now? He's in um, California. Don't say to kids, you can do whatever you want if you work hard. They'll end up on the West Coast <laughs> sometimes. But he's, um, he graduated in biomedical engineering yeah. from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Yeah. And he's the guy who's in the operating room when the surgeon is, is you've broken your back yeah. and you've, you're getting it fixed. And the page, you know, if the patient starts to take a tough turn, he's the guy that says, well, the alternative procedure is, and he called me up one day. Whenever he calls and says he's on the way to the hospital, I'm still not used to it. But he said, mom, the fireman can now walk. He said, I was with the surgeon 13 hours in surgery. I waited to see how it went, and that fireman can walk now. Isn't that amazing? And to be able to make that kind of difference. Yeah, in um, people's lives. It's a terrific company, sure Medtronics. Is. A lot of people are, you know, yeah. have heard of it. I, I certainly have, because I worked for the Heart Association for a while. Oh, and Medtronics wow. does in the heart area as well. It's, so. you know, it's, it's um, technology oh. that makes people um, live longer, happier, is the way I look it at is. it. Well, I wish you the best of luck. You're Thank you. You've got some people running against you. I, That's I what do. happens. I do. I but like to say there are four behind me, and I'm sure every one of them says <laughs> the same. I was with uh, John Mahoney last night at the, um, I went to the Plymouth Firefighters uh, swearing in uh -huh. at their selectmen's meeting. And um, just, you know, it, it's, um, it's a great job running for office yeah. because you, you meet so many wonderful people and you get um, more informed about important things. Well, it's wonderful, and it was so nice meeting you Thank in person. You. I appreciate not on the, the phone opportunity. and right. not a path crossing. Right. It's excellent. I hope I see you again real thanks soon. Thanks so much. I love your show. Oh, thanks. Thank you. We'll try not to screw it up some way. <laughs> oh, oh, I love those outtakes. <laughs> anyway, thanks again, Susan. Thank you. Susan Moran running for State Senate. Terrific lady. I hope you give her a look. Well, I think you should give all the candidates a look for sure. But I enjoyed talking to her today, and she definitely has an agenda and where she wants to take her district. So thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you next time on another Cape Conversations. One Take Wonder is back!